chronic, chronically ill children, potentially high risk for more advanced disease. Some of the groups we've thought about are kids with chronic uh, respiratory disease, chronic pulmonary disease, severe asthma, for instance, interstitial lung disease, kids that have tracheostomy or ventilator dependence, cystic fibrosis, other chronic lung diseases, certain types of congenital heart disease, patients with uh, severe neurologic disease, including muscle disease, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, especially our, our boys that are uh, wheelchair bound, uh, and then patients obviously underga- undergoing cancer treatment, chemotherapy, who have uh, compromised immune systems, patients with other inflammatory dis- disorders taking immune suppressive medications. There's a number of groups that we're thinking about. Um, how should we be approaching the care of those patients uh, in, in our practices around the country? And the other two groups I would add are kids on dialysis yeah. um, or kids who have uh, transplant recipients. So That's all good point. transplants or bone marrow transplant patients uh, would also be in the higher risk category. Those, all those children do fit into the high risk category of people who are at higher risk for having more severe disease with this pathogen. Um, and so they're not particularly called out in any of the recommendations, but because uh, most of them are focused on adults, but children would fall into that category too in terms of if they do have underlying chronic medical conditions or if they're immunocompromised. And so first I would say all those patients and their families uh, right now should start practicing good social distancing measures. And that's really just to protect yourself. We are, we're advising that too for people older, over, over a certain age as well. Um, you know, the recommendations of people over 60 should think about those things, but particularly if you're over 70, uh, where the mortality rate um, goes up uh, very high after that uh, age group. And so uh, in order to protect your children, first of all, that's the one thing you should be thinking about in terms of what are you doing every day um, and uh, try to limit the exposure would be number one thing to do. Uh, the second thing, again, same advice as to normal healthy kids is that if your kid is only mildly ill, um, they don't need to be seen and actually being seen, you know, if you come to the ER, we have lots of sick kids in our ER um, and uh, we want to keep those that don't need to be there out of there and particularly kids who are at risk for um, uh, if they were to catch something, to be sicker. So again, if you're just mildly ill, that's a phone call to your provider uh, or, your, or your specialist to uh, talk it over with them and make sure that they agree that you're safe to be at home. Uh, and for most of the kids, that will be the case. Yeah, and one other thing that we've really emphasized is proactively reaching out to families, making sure that they have their medications refilled, making sure that they have enough equipment at home.